Welcome everybody all across Europe further afield. Wherever you are on this beautiful Sunday morning, we are happy to have you here with us watching the bronze medal action at X EUCF 2021. Ranla from Dublin taking on Gentil from Ghent just down the road. Both disappointed to not be in the final, but still looking for some glory in the form of bronze medals hanging around their neck. I am the most objective commentator in the world, Lorca Murray, and I am joined by fellow Irishman, Sean Colfer. How are you, Sean? I'm doing well, thank you, Lorcan. Ready to balance out your objectivity with some intense bias. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Speculation and prejudice as Rogers sends that one out. Huge layout, D. De Crane. Unbelievable play, and it shows just how much Gentle want this. They had a huge sideline yesterday as what seemed like the town of Ghent came to support them. And you could see they're carrying it through desire. They hadn't made a finals in about seven years. I believe 2014 was the last one they made up to this one. What a way to come back to the elite European stage. And now looking for an early break in a 45-minute game that could make all the difference. Smooth shot, the Klane, the man who got the layout D. Goes for the pop, front of the end zone. Has a few options in front of him. And eventually gets that around the back and in. 2-0 to Gentle. Not an ideal start for Randler, but this is exactly what Gentle would have been talking about in the builder. Get out there, put your first offense point in and just put as much pressure as possible on the Randler O-line. And that was an absolutely phenomenal layout block. It looked as though Devi maybe took a step to slow himself down as he was approaching the catch. Can't do that with defenders like this around. They are going to fly in front of you and knock it away. You're entirely right. Landon Crane and the rest of the Ghent team showing how intense they are. Ranla having to call a timeout. 2-0 this quick into a game that's going to be over almost as quick. It's a big deficit. And something you noticed was the lineup Ranla went with at the start of the game seemed to catch your eye, Sean. Yeah, so the first point of the game, considering this is, as Lorcan said, going to be... Both teams in here are a bit disappointed not to make the final. You wonder what their focus is, where their eyes are. They're putting 100% into it. But Randler started out the game with two of their O-line mainstays, Ferdy Rogers and Ty Devi, both on the field. So they are clearly really focused on this game, and they really want to get this bronze medal. This is the furthest either of these teams have ever made it at EUCF. Neither of them have any medals at this level. And it's a rare enough thing, especially when it's nearly always Clapham taking one of them anyway. So it means uh, quite a lot, not just to the players themselves. So Ghent representing a huge club of over 300 to 450 people in uh, Ghent. And then on the opposite side, Ranla, a group of dedicated men who came together and said, we're just going to train as hard as we can and see how far we can push Club Ultimate, a Club Ultimate from Ireland specifically. And they've both made it all the way to the semi-finals of Europe, disappointing losses, and now back Looking for medals. Yeah, no Irish team want a medal, so this would be huge for Ranla. Mm -hmm. Back to Rogers. Spreads it out wide. McNamara. Huge shot, and he is one of the favorite hookers from Ranla. But a second D from De Crane. Lander is on fire. Great read from De Crane. It looked as though he had best position the whole way. Devi had to try and come back to it, but again, De Crane making a huge play. Stan Midar. Spreads it out wide. Eustace trying to creep across it to the open lane. Ghent taking their time. Getting the quick and easy under. Verikin down the line. Big, big coming in. Gentle taking their time. Nice and easy with it. Verikin. It's going back to Dennis Kettels for a travel, immediately jumps into Varikin, and it's a violation again. The belief seems to be that uh, they're trying to get to Varikin, and he might just feel like launching one downfield. Decides against it, instead goes to the under. Denny Kethels, Varikin, the two of them working together a lot right now, waiting for more options to develop downfield. Great dump defense, forcing the hammer over the top, but it's a beautiful shot and well collected. And Flus. Oh, there's going to be a stall out called all the way back here on Verikin. The hammer went off to Flus. Cotton still hasn't realized, neither has his mark. 
basically no one's realized except for the two players involved in the call. Cotton almost gets stalled out himself going for the scuba and a big score. Somebody needs to tell them that it stopped like three minutes ago. They actually had a stoppage over there that they discussed it while this was still happening. You ever seen a double call like that before, Sean? <laughs> no, I've never seen a whole side of the pitch and like a massive group of people completely engaged in what they're doing and just ignoring what's going on down here for so long. That's really, really unusual. So, Verikin will get another shot at it. He's doing really well in short spaces to get some, some space around Matty Feely and kind of get those dumps up the line, keep the disc moving. He's been doing a really good job for this general D-line. As they look to extend their lead even further, perhaps fatally so. And like I said, look, not, not much time for Ryan to come back if they do go down 3-0 here. That's a discussion. And they go for the big, over the top. Doesn't work at all. Use Peter sniffs it out and snuffs it out. This is also not what Randall are going to be wanting at all. The number of calls to slow things down here. They're already 2-0 down. Could go further down and it's just eating into their time. Seem to be discussing a violation that was called and whether or not it affected play. They agree it was a turnover. Appreciate the hand signals. Peters, disc in hand. Marked by Cotton. Huge layout bid. Feely waits too long for it, and Verikin jumps across and gets a massive hand. Gentle flying all over the place, aren't they? They make some huge plays on D here. Very hungry, very intense, the Klane. Is it down the line? McNamara does his best, but it's not quite enough this time. Denise Kethels gets it all the way back to Verikin, giving up yards and a timeout called. Again, not what Ranallo want. No, not at all. More time off the clock. Less time to come back, to eat into this lead. And giving up the disc again, it's a second time really where someone's either slowed down or been static and not been fully attacking the disc. And it, at this level, Ranallo are going to know Players just can't, they're just not mistakes you can make. They're not places you can throw to. You've got to keep going all the way through the catch because people are going to be flying in front of you. They played against Kuz yesterday, did a great job under intense pressure from the Italians on D. They played against Badskid and, and beat them. Randall know what it is to play at this level, but not quite hitting the heights that they've set for themselves at this stage. Well, we were surprised by the intensity which Ghent came into this game with, Gentle. And maybe it surprised Randall as well, knocked them back. There's been Massive layouts from Verikin and the Krane just on people who are slowing down a little bit too much, maybe not attacking all the way through, like you're saying, Sean. So now this has happened, can Randler respond? I would have thought something a little bit like that there would have woken them up as they had to earn it back, but still struggling to get going in the morning rain. It could be tough as well. The schedule's changed. They've, you know, they had expectations of playing at 9 o'clock. Then that changes. You have expectations of playing a full game. Now it's 45 minutes. It's difficult to kind of maintain your focus all the way through there, especially when they've been putting so much effort and energy into getting into semifinals and trying to get into the final. So it can be a tough thing. Maybe they haven't quite shaken off that kind of early morning cloud, like you say, Welcome. It is a joy, though. Sometimes third, fourth playoffs, not the most combat competitive as people are understandably disappointed, not quite as invested as they were before they were eliminated. But this one, not meeting that type at all. Verikin gets it across the Decrani. He's on the far side. Filion Verikin battling in the middle in acres of space. And another break all the way around, but this one stopped out by Jack McNamara. And is he gonna launch deep straight away? He's certainly gonna think about it. Rogers, Feely, and Randler are now gonna try and get their quick moving offense down the break side like they want to. All tournament long. Feely in the middle, spreads it. Rogers collects. Nothing really coming on the open side. Immediately back to Feely. Randall is starting to flow a little bit now. And there's the classic mid pitch break that tends to open up their offense. A nice shot to Rogers all the way across. And Peters for the score. That's much more like it. Absolutely. That's Randall offense, like you said, Lorcan. They're looking for that. Continuation onto the break side, get the person in a power position in the middle of the field and keep it moving nice and quick. They did a really, really good job there after a tough point from Ghent. Ghent are going to be 
a little disappointed they weren't able to put that in because that would potentially have put the game away really, really early on. But now the pressure's on their O-line and Randler are going to know they're going to have to come back. You can expect to see Irishmen flying around on the next point, I would wager. Going to go with some of the more intense, athletic, younger people to bring that fire. It can be hard to get going when it's raining this hard, but there's glory on the line. Just tantalizingly out of reach for now. Who can wrap their fingers around it? Gentle. Ranla. XEUCF 2021. So it looks as though Ferdy Rogers is staying on the field. So that's the fourth point in a row that Ferdy has been on the field. Which is all of them, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> in this case, two plus one was outside of your ability. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some people discalcula. It's a real thing. As we see, Van de Vey working down there with Boomalal. Two steady handling forces. Boomalal so consistent, so regular. Just brings a security to the gentle offense as he narrowly avoids getting deed. And a lovely break goes. No, that's PJ. So Peter Jan de Moulinel. And smooth shot inside to Toby de Clane. And he has had one hell of a breakout tournament, that young player. De Moulinel across to the middle and waiting there. Arthur van de Vey. De Moulinel and gentle. Taking a little easy. Relaxed working down the pitch. Yeah, it seems like they're getting this, this movement, getting this space fairly comfortably. The Brandler are pretty close, putting pressure on the mark, but they haven't yet had a bid at any of these, any of these uh, discs, really. No flying Irishman yet. No. That's a lovely break by de Moulinel. Gets it to Sanders. There's a call on the throw. Very disjointed game so far. I don't know whether this is suiting either team really, but as we've said several times, time-wise, it's definitely not suiting Ranelow. De Moulinel. I was really hoping he would be able to get his number six for Gentle Sanders, because that man is creative with the disc in his hand. Goes for it a second time, but gets the break in the end. Van de Vey. Another call. Looks like another pick. That's Aaron and Arthur van der Vey just passing it back and forth, 88 and 90. Very athletic handlers, which is an oxymoron, I know, but. And on the opposite sideline, van der Vey, de Moulinau. And van der Vey is working hard against Tyg Bogan, but can't get free. Instead, it's all the way down the pitch to De Klane. And De Klane launches a hammer over the top to Sanders. It's going to come back for a travel. Yeah, Stephen Jones pointing at the ground where he wanted the receiver to come in and put his pivot point, which was ignored, and it's going to come all the way back. It was pretty clear communication pretty early on, but still some discussion about it. That's the thing about Gentle. Nice, relaxed, flowing pace all the way down the pitch. Well, then they can throw some spice when they need to. Tasty hammer in the rain. More of that. De Klane. Van de Vey makes a move to try and help him out. It's good dump coverage. Stolkan's getting high. The hammer goes up again. They're more prepared for it this time. A mob's underneath, but Sanders looked to get his hands around it. There's going to be a call on that one too and give him for a score. Yeah, nice spirit from Randler there. It was thrown into a bit of the pack and it did look as though it was knocked out of the hand after the catch. Randler agree and they are 3-1 down, but Pretty good D on the front corner of the end zone there, forced into that hammer. The first time he threw it was a, was a choice, but that definitely was not a choice there. But they all, if they come off, they're, if they come off, they're all great decisions. Everything counts if it works, even if it was done out of resignation. So gentle. It's not a commanding lead under normal circumstances, but with the shortened time frame and the large amount of calls that we've had early in this match, 3-1 is a pretty big deal. We know Randall will want to come down and score quickly going back to that O-line that has done so well for them throughout this tournament. It's been a pretty good tournament for Belgian Ultimate generally, hasn't it? Or here in Bruges, you've got Gentle in the 
Mooncatchers, I know, did have a disappointing conclusion to their tournament, but started out so brightly. And Love made the quarterfinals in the women's division, so it's been a good, good tournament for the host nation. Very impressive performances across the board. And a lot to be proud of here in this wonderful country. McNamara. Back to Rogers. Murphy thinks about sending it to McNamara, decides against. Rogers <laughs> battling to get free, and uh, they don't call it, counts. Peters. Down the line, Murphy. Arcs a beautiful one, but it's just too high for Devi, and it bounces out of his fingers. So gentle with a chance to go up by three. Yeah, and with his head in his hands after that throw there. Realized it was a, a probably a bad decision that was also executed quite badly, so that's a one he's gonna want back. Well, he's got the opportunity to earn it back. That's Verikin, who keeps faking flick hooks and he won't throw them. <laughs> Declane. I understand the open unders are there, you should take them, but you know it's very tantalizing. Declane isn't a tease. He launches one straight to the end zone, and it is a score. 4 1. Declane has had an absolutely phenomenal game so far. He has been getting blocks, he's been a really big anchor of this D line offense, throwing scores. I think he's caught one as well. So far, he's been dominating this game, just taking it away from Randall almost single handedly, it seems at times. He's been the standout performer on a team of Belgians who are hungry to get their first medals at the European level. 4-1, playing at home, it's gotta help. The support, not as vociferous or as uh, deep as it was yesterday, but still here, and you can still feel that spirit. It's a tough thing to have to battle against if you're Ranla, but Ranla are battlers. As is well established, they will go till sundown or nightfall, because still skeptical about whether or not the sun exists. <laughs> we haven't seen it in quite some time. I'm worried about my vitamin D levels. Well, it's your, your Irish look and your body's developed to work without vitamin D, I think, at this point. <laughs> That's why there's so much scurvy in my family, is Rogers. He's hoping to get a bit of energy back into his team. Feely down the line to Jones. It's good space creation, Doyle. And it just bounces through his hands, the rain. The situation, difficult as Varikin, right back to it, getting going and bounces out of the hands of Fuse. So one good turn deserving another. Feely, flows it to Jones, immediately down the line. Kyo, or. Rogers, Feely, and that's a score. And didn't break stride in the celebration. Randall feeling it now. If he wasn't in, that was going to be an enormous travel. Matthew Feely just carrying on, running. But better offense from Randall once they got the disc back. Ran down that far sideline. A nice swing into the middle from Kokor into, into Rogers and a nice easy score, which is really what they needed. I think it's a little bit of a let off given the, given the drop there just as they're approaching the end zone. And Randall finding some joy by mixing up their lines a little bit more, putting Kokor out on the O-line. They also yeah. brought McNamara over to the O-line as well for a, a point previously. Jones as well was on on that one. So they're not afraid to mix it up. Normally we saw the O-lines moving on to the D side of things, but a lot of the times you saw Randler were keeping it close in their games and they were fighting for breaks. This time around they're just fighting to stay in it. So a big, big D-line for Randler now. Yeah, every one of these D-line points is going to be massive for Randler until they get this break back. So Bumalau, Van de Vey, De Moulinar makes a cut in the middle, marked by Kelleher. Nothing coming from it. And that's hung up for De Moulinar on the second ask, but he can't toe the line and gets the block. So Ranla, short field is exactly what they need. A quick break if they can punch it in. That's Jeremy Doyle picking up the disc, an American import, but a welcome one. And a shot down field, scooped up off the ground. Murphy getting low and bringing it up, trying to get Randler back into this game. Lovely little give go in front of the end zone with McCreary. It's gonna go 
back to McCreary. They do the exact same move once the play starts again. Murphy in front of the end zone, looks for the break to Niall McCartney and gets it. 4-3. Huge moment for Randall. That is exactly what they needed. They were two breaks down, pulled one of them back, but Gentle's offense, both D-line and O-line, started out looking so clinical, so easy, but that's a couple of miscues from them. One on the sideline here, right by their own end zone, giving Randall that short field, and pressure's back on Gentle a bit now. Perhaps some rough times ahead for the boys from Ghent. Randall hoping to keep ratcheting up this pressure. That defensive presence that they've had has been very impressive over the course of this tournament. We got to call one of their games yesterday. I also called their semi-final. And it does seem to really put teams on edge and generate those kinds of turns. It really does. They're very, very physical, and they're right up in Cutter's faces as they're trying to make their moves. And it definitely seems as though it puts people off right at that point where you're about to make the catch. You really need to focus all the way through as you close your hands around it and taking your eye off it or taking concentration off it for a split second, as we all know, can lead to a fumble. And Randler are really good at forcing those kind of those kind of problems for offenses. Constantly toying with your mind. Shadows in your thoughts. As now they look to be demons on the pitch and get this disc back up. What is a fairly consummate, gentle offensive unit. They rested a couple of players throughout the tournament that helped them get to the semifinals, which is what they attribute to it. They had a great game in the quarterfinals. Really impressive performance over the course of the last four days. As Van de Vey, who I've been incredibly impressed with mm. all tournament long. To be clear, that's Aaron Van de Vey, number 88. There's three Van de Vey's on the team. He wastes no time sending that deep to De Moulinaire. If you know European Ultimate, you know what happens next. Five, three. Or yeah, it's a really, really good throw early on in the stall count. And PC and De Moulinaire reads that perfectly. Kelleher, it looks as though turns over the wrong shoulder and it just doesn't give him enough time to get back into it. But even if he was reading that perfectly, a receiver like PC and De Moulinaire is gonna take that down nine times out of 10. Fantastic in the air, has been for a long time. One of the best receivers around for many years and helps Gentle extend that lead. A legend when I was first getting into the sport at the European level, and you would hear about free speed with this massive Belgian on their team. He's come back to Ghent and helping out his home club, being a big leader for them for a few years now. Yep, I remember people talking about this massive young Belgian, this new kid on the block. And then I was talking to someone the other day and said, oh, you know, PT Ann is getting a bit older, he's struggling a bit with injuries. And I was like, how old is he? And he's younger than me, Lorcan, so it's depressing to hear that people are saying that he's getting older. Still good, though. Time does keep going. It's, it's a bit annoying like that, eh? Waits for no man. And now it settles in the end zone. I, I'm sorry, I can't tell who that is from here, but they get it to Rogers with a nice break flick and into the middle to Murphy. Randler, middle of the pitch, sends it to TV, slides to the ground and picks it up quickly. Has Doyle, decides not to force the throw. Divi and De Grane having a battle out in the pitch. Murphy on the opposite side, continuing the swing over to Peters. Peters has Feely going and instead tries to huck a hammer and it hits the ground. A miscommunication between Peters and Doyle, I believe. Yeah, it's an expansive option that Randler don't really throw very frequently. They're a really quick moving, efficient offense, and they don't usually try those throws over the top, and maybe that's why Lorcan did not come off on this occasion. It was a bit of an anomaly for the Randler offense, but they're trying to be as diverse as they can be. You get, you're too specific, you could become too predictable. Of course, if it's not something you've drilled, you won't be very well prepared for it. As we see Randler trying to put pressure on, Verikin. And there's a lot of fighting going on in that end, so it's kind of difficult to see for us from our position. I think that's Verikin against Rogers. No, that's Verikin. With Feely. And a big hammer through the middle to Dejrane. And see, Gentle, that is a part of their game plan. Dejrane to Dejrane. Bit of brotherly love. That is an absolutely phenomenal flip hook right out in front of his brother. Nice, easy catch. The defender just can't get there because it's so perfectly placed. And that is another break for Gentle after Randler earned one back. Lander to Toby. Really well done. We've seen Lander do that a few times over the course of this tournament. No hesitation, just catch it and lash it. 
because he's got the receivers who are expecting it. Perfectly timed, perfectly put, and perfectly put down on Ranla. 6-3 again. Every time they seem to be clawing back into it. Gentle, turn it up another notch. Yeah, real Godfather 3 stuff. Every time I think I'm getting back into the game, they, they pull it back away. But real family affair for Gentle looking at this, uh, this team list. There's a lot of surnames that are the same. Is that because they're common in Belgium or do we actually have a lot of brothers on this team? I feel like there is a lot of family love on this team. The Van Der Vees, uh and the the Cranes. <laughs> Literally just watched them <laughs> uh, being a part of it. But it's a big club. A lot of family in Ghent. Like we were saying, you can't have hundreds of people in one club and none of them are related. I would speak very strangely of the club as Murphy launches one downfield and it slips out of his hand. And you can almost feel the same happening with those medals. Yeah, again, it's Randall are trying things that they aren't necessarily or haven't necessarily been relying on all tournament, probably because they are feeling the pressure with, we're over halfway through this game, they're 6-3 down, they really need to get these holds in so they can get this D-line back out. They want to get it over and done with nice and quickly, but Murphy's just not executing that as much as he, or, or as well as he would have wanted to, certainly. A terrible feeling as it slips out. Vriken burns deep immediately. There's a big under. Murphy's trying to fight to get back into position. They center it. That's Midar who launches one all the way downfield. Underneath it is Fuse, and he lights it up. What a grab. What a catch that is. He hung in the air for what seemed like an eternity. I thought he went up too early and gave Doyle a chance to get back into it, but Fuse going a mile in the air to reel that one in. What a grab, and a four-point lead over halfway. Randler's heads look a little down to me. They don't have the same energy they've had in previous games. Big, big, big point in the game this for Gentle. Chance to take half in a game where I was at one point curious if half would actually come into it. But on the one side, the game has cleaned up a lot. A lot less calls, but it is absolutely working in favor of Ghent. They seem to be freewheeling it out there. Swashbuckling play. They are feeling themselves, and they are feeling like they deserve to be bronze medalists. Ranla, maybe they're getting lost in their feelings. Could well be. Could well be. It's really tough in this kind of position to keep your head up and keep the intensity going. It's one of those things where you can talk about it all you want, but until you get into the game and you feel that sinking feeling where it's not going right, maybe it's not our day, or they're playing really well, they're playing really loose and they look like having a good time, it's going badly for us, it's really, really tough to pull yourself out of that hole. There's nothing worse than going down in the team you're playing, you just look like they're having fun with it. Yeah. And they're playing brilliantly, but having fun doing it. That's very demoralizing. As Ranla, Jones, Doyle, and they're looking to get that quick play going again. Sees Rogers in front of him, can't get it off. Feely, the shoulder shimmy in the turn. Marked by Cotton. Looking for options, Rogers on the slight break side, collects it. Back to Feely. Rogers again, milking that for all it's worth. Jones. Feely, smoothly across. And I believe that was a score, 7-4. Yeah, it's a really, really important one for Randler. Getting back in the game, nice offense, back to what we're seeing or used to seeing from them. Moving the disc quickly, Ferdy Rogers dictating things, marshalling the offense. Matthew Feely throwing those nice arounds and those quick movements. So back to what they back to what they've been doing all tournament and what else they've been doing all tournament is hard, intense defensive pressure and putting a massive amount of physical pressure on the offensive players. They are really, really good at getting to the body and forcing those turnovers, and they really, really need another one here, Lorcan. I believe once you get rolling on the defense, they can push all the way through this. It is definitely a game of runs, much like basketball. And if you can just find that switch and turn it, which that kind of energy after a score can be the catalyst for it. So Ghent, opportunity to take half on the offense, and if they do it with something flashy, that could be the bronze medal right there but they're gonna have to fight their way through Ranla's physical, present defense on every single cut. Ferdy Rogers back out here. Ty DV as well, so a couple of O-line guys. I think Ferdy has had maybe two points off so far in this game. Sounds like Ferdy. <laughs> Van de Vey. You can see the poach into the open lane by Ranla, 
They're trying to get that disc over to Bumalal. And almost sneaking there was Ferdio Rogers. Sanders, he likes to throw a lot of spicy moves out on the pitch. Sends it in to Moulinau. Bumalal. Randler keeping them pinned, but it just takes one throw to get the flow going. De Moulinel has Van de Vey, decides not to go with them. Now the Stolkan's got to be getting higher, eventually able to get it off. Van de Vey spreading it. De Moulinel. And the downfield marking of Randler has been really impressive. Van de Vey. Having to do a lot with Moulin, and there they open it up, launching it across. We've got a battle to Crane against Jones, and uh, Jones comes up with the goods. Really good job by Stephen Jones of positioning himself. Reads the disc, puts himself into the spot that the disc is going to land, and puts himself between the disc and the offensive player gets there first. Do we have an injury call here, Lorcan? There seems to be some kind of call as we see Lander to Crane making his way onto the pitch. I think Bumalal is the one coming off. See a change for Randler at the back here. Tyg. Tyg Bogan has come off and Matty Feely has come on. And I would hasten to say that that is not a defensive matchup. You probably wouldn't want Matty Feely on PZ Ander Mulinar, I would, I would suggest. No. Unless <laughs> you're trying to go with the ironic approach. <laughs> One of those, put, it, put him off. He's thinking, oh, this guy must be incredible in the air. Make him overthink things, maybe. But no, this is clearly a thing to... Help Randler get that offense moving. Van de Vey picking up Feely. And Moulinair moving on to Merman. Myrna. <laughs> Stephen Jones collects the disc. Pops back in. McCreary bobs a little in his chest. It is getting very slippy out there. So much focus needed to hold on to it. And to hold on to a chance of glory here at e XEUCF 2021. Ferdio Rogers. Doesn't see anything wrong with a little bump and grind on the mark. DV. And Randler hit the break so consistently that they throw marks about the place in their attempts to slow it down. That was almost too casual. Seemed to be a foul. And Rogers getting free from Van de Vey. Yeah, Lorcan said he's been really physical and he's a couple of times he's been dropping his shoulder. Seems like everyone's been pretty, pretty happy with it so far and the level of physicality has been set at a good level, but I think the uh, slightly Slight bumping Van Way a little bit too much on that last cut. McCreary had the flick break originally, goes with the backhand on the second asking. Shot down the line to Jones. Watching the sideline carefully. Looking into an end zone full of options. Gets it to Rogers, middle of the pitch. There's going to be another call. Maybe a foul again. Aaron Van de Vey. Just trying to talk to Rogers about what he's not comfortable with. Feels he's getting pushed off and that's the extra step that Rogers is using to get free. I think on that kind of throw, it's it's tough to call that foul because the throw is into space so much behind you. Ferdy Rogers has uncontested it, but certainly we've seen plenty of times where Ferdy has been trying to use his body to help himself get open. So uh, Jones tries to lash one to DV in the end zone, but a brilliant defensive effort C gets in the way. It's now Gemp with another look at half. And now with those changes... It was more of a defensive substitution for Kent and an offensive one for Randler. We'll see if that comes into play. De Moulinel. De Crane. They're getting flowing a little bit better now. Lander De Crane from Toby. Van de Vey. Arthur. Yeah, 90 Arthur. To Aaron Van de Vey. Back down the line. Sanders. I would describe him as a spice merchant, but he's been keeping the goods pretty salt to the earth right now. Lovely shot all the way down, almost in for a score, but not quite there. Looking for double happiness, the man who got the layout D. And he shoots it to the end zone, but overshoots Van der Vey. Yeah, intense pressure from Randler there, but you have to say that that's just a miscue in the end zone. I think Van der Vey had space just a little bit too far in front of him which is unusual because Gentle have been really precise and really good at executing those short field situations. When they get to the end zone, they've pretty much been scoring every time, so you would have put your money on them there, but now Randall have another look at getting a break here. So here comes Rogers. He has Feely down the line. 
Good initial defense. That still's got to be getting high. And a leading past the Decrane just jumps in and steals almost a Callahan. And a no look pass for the score to Vanderwey. And that's exactly what I was talking about. That's really, really nice. It's not, I don't think, quite the same as the no look behind the back pass we saw yesterday because he's looked at his man, identified exactly his position, and then looked away to distract the defenders. So he knows where he's throwing to, he knows exactly what's happening. You see, he sees his man, looks away, and then still throws it there. So he knows what he's throwing to, but still, nice bit of spice there. So casual and just the most demoralizing way to take half if you're a Ranala fan. But if you're in Ghent right now, you're having a good time. And we welcome everybody to the stream. We've got a full day of finals action still to come. We had the mixed semi-final where Puti picked up a bronze overflow in an exhilarating matchup. We have this for the bronze in the men's. And then coming up afterwards, we have the women's bronze medal match. And that's just the morning with the short games, appetizers for the main courses, the finals that are all happening later day. And they will all be free on YouTube. So stick around with ulti.tv for all the action as Ranla, in one of the shortest halves we've seen on a weekend filled with them, looking to fight their way back into this game with a few minutes remaining. Yeah, not long left, four point gap. Ranla are gonna need to put this, put this offensive point in really quickly and then get out there and start getting some blocks as quickly as they can. But Ghent are gonna be doing everything they can to slow them down and we see a loose looking zone here. Rogers, Feely, and Peters, and this is what Ranla liked to do, go up against the zones, cut through them, attack through the middle, force the cut back, and then swing around it. You see Kokora making that exact move. Rogers coming back for the swing. And they're just happy to keep passing as I believe that's a melt we can hear. As they switch to match defense, Kokorin, steady as a rock. Peters. Pops it to Rogers. No mark on him for a considerable amount of time there. Back to Feely. And Randall after look flowing quite well. The switch to match defense seems to have stymied them somewhat. Still getting the dumps off with relative ease, but not a whole lot of penetration downfield. And there's a foul immediately called and uncontested by Giuseppe De Pote. Yeah, like you say, the, they were working through that zone really, really nicely, but Gentle have done a really good job of switching to match, getting it all right at the same time, all doing the same thing at the same time, and really limiting what Ranala can do here. And it's slowed the offense down enormously. Rogers. Able to get it back to McCreary, who then a beautiful flick breaks Rogers. Really well worked. Back to McCreary, who wanted another flick break, and they're just doing some handler weaving right now. Throw and go, and Verikin and Depote are just being left in the dust, and a quick pop to Doyle. Yeah, it almost looked as though the two defenders, Verikin and uh, Giuseppe Depote, were uh, kind of giving up a little bit there because of the quick movement. I mean, the movement there, the speed of the disc going around the front of the end zone was really difficult to stop, and by the time Ferdi Rogers catches it just outside the end zone before he throws the throw, in for the score, it did look as though the two defenders had already pretty much given up the ghost. And a lovely pop to Doyle. Offhand, just because why not? Calm and casual. And showing a bit of confidence to probably fill your team from the sideline. Three points down now in their quest for eternal glory in the European annals of ultimate. Jones with a big huck in windy and rainy conditions gets them to the end zone. Van de Vey. And Randler doing again their poaching into the open lane just a little bit. De Moulinel, De Clane, gentle moving downfield a lot quicker than they have in previous points. And a big shot from De Clane. He's looking for De Moulinel and he gets him despite a huge defensive effort. 9-5. Yeah, Murphy with a great bid, but Dumoulinari had the space. It was a wonderful throw out in front of him. When you've got receivers of that caliber, you know you can just put the disc out in front and they're going to go and do the work. And it was a nice, easy score for Gentle, despite the fact that Randler really need those breaks back. It was Gentle's offense that really did take the terms at that point. And the flick, huck, perfect shape on it, coming straight into the hands 
Dr. Mulinari. Great offense. You can see how tight that defensive pressure is. You have to be perfect in those situations. Even when throwing something like Di Mulinari, where the prevailing wisdom when I would try to do it, if I ever got the chance, would be, he's going to get it. I just need to put it in the end zone somewhere. But that time, De Clane measures it perfectly. The outside in, just soft enough so that it doesn't go into the ground, but with enough zip that it floats for De Mulinari to run onto. The De Clane brothers have really, really been excellent in this game. It really seems as though that those two have been the two that have taken the game away from Randall's grasp more than any other gentle player. But across the roster, gentle have been extremely impressive in this game. They've really hit a nice moment of their youth side of their club and some of the old veterans coming together and performing so powerfully. As we see Ranla trying to match that power. McNamara working with Peters against the zone. Which is a great decision by Ghent to just slow this game down. Jones, McNamara, juiced. Well, McNamara clearly doesn't want to slow this game down. But he's going to have to go all the way back for a travel on Jones. A few D-line players out here for Randler, diversifying their lines slightly. It's Jones, McCorin, McCreary. And Rogers was thinking about the throw, the classic error. As now, Gentle, rushing, looking for something. The stall count's starting to get high. Nice little undercut directly in front of us. And a huge grab on an unbelievable throw. And this just seems like it's Gentle's day when you're getting plays like that. Arthur, fuse one more time. I was just thinking about what I was going to say about how that hammer was probably not necessary, a little bit too expensive. And what a catch by Fuse that is. Out into this space, and Fuse goes all the way horizontal and a good bit off the ground as well to reel it in. That's two plays that Fuse has made in this game. Both unbelievably athletic. The shape of his body there is so impressive. I honestly can't tell if that's us doing slow motion or if that's just how he looks as he... Gets as close to flying as I've ever, ever seen a human do without a jet. Oh, that is an incredible catch. Kelleher giving him the hand slap afterwards, recognizing how special that was. A big moment for a big... A roughhousing Ranla now, 10-5, and doing it with phenomenal plays. Real panache. Real panache. Van der Verge, by the way, was the one who threw the hammer. Doyle. Oh, big time grab. Arthur Fuse. Stalin that was almost nonchalant how quickly they scored on that one. Getting it down to Murphy in the end zone. Yeah, it was a good extension from Ferdy Rogers to, to reel that disc in. And mm -hmm. you can see now, Randall are basically playing indoors. They're setting their line and they're going to, wouldn't surprise if they put a hand up and started counting to 10 here. They want to get this game moving as quickly as possible. A classic rule. And something that can really help when the time is going down. But what else would they need? That's a fantastic shot from Rogers. Yep. Murphy almost surprised himself. He's in. Yep, we're done. Let's go. They want to pick up the pace. They want to pick up the pressure. I think they maybe pick up the power. We're gentler going with pizzazz. Randall can respond with power. They tried doing a few things outside of the wheelhouse, and it was some crucial turns out of it. As there's a huge Levandeve, they're just looking to do Milanare to finish it, but brilliant pressure by Tyke, Bogan, Carey. As we go again, Jeremy Doyle, disc in hand. He has Rogers down the line, sees him, feeds him, but it's coming back for a travel. Yeah, a lot of travels by Gentle on these kind of around throws. They seem to be thinking that Randler are just extending it a little bit further than they should be to get the disc out. And time is over, was just screamed across the pitches. Rogers screams that shot down the line to Doyle. That's Luke Doyle. The receiver from Cork. Rogers in the middle of the pitch. Beautiful shot to Murphy. And Rogers with a scuba. A little bit of style of their own. Now Jeremy Doyle, the handler from America. Ranla continue to work it. Micklem gets it to Peters. Peters to Bogan Carey. And Ferdy Rogers scores 10-7. Critical moment. Game to 11, I think, now? I believe so. Game to 11. They're going to want to be 
getting these points going as quickly as they can. Nice point there, like you say, some panache from Ferdy Rogers with the scuba. I think the big difference there for, for Ranla is getting Tide Bogan carry on and putting someone of his size on PC Andrew Mulinari. And it looks as though we've got some celebration from Gentle here. Is there a timeout, Lorcan, or do you think that they've called this because of the time? I mean, I guess there might be a chance of that, although it would be incredibly harsh. As we just see Ty Bogan carry shot through the middle again. I think it's just a timeout and Gentle are keeping their spirits high, recognizing that they have this game well within their grasp. The women's teams are coming on to the field up there. Or it oh, it appears like this game might be over. This game might well be over. It looks like it's it been It certainly time. seems like it is. Uh, so 10-7, congratulations to Gentle, who win a bronze medal in the European Championships by getting scored on, which is a rarity. <laughs> but they took the strong lead early. They kept the pressure up. Ranla tried to fight back multiple times, getting one break. And Gentle just pushed them right back down and said, no, no, no. Well done on making the semi-finals. We're happy to have gotten here too, but only one of us can go home with some medal, and it's going to be staying in Belgium. Big congratulations to Gentle on the bronze medal win, and uh, thank you very much. I'll be heading off, but Sean Culver is staying here to cover the women's bronze medal match with the wonderful Ali Thomas. I've been Lurgan Murray. It's a pleasure.